Good morning. <clears throat> We've had quite a bit of uh, important announcements and encouragements this morning. Um, we're so grateful to the Lord for the marriage course, and we're grateful to the Lord for uh, yeah, the way He has used our church. And I don't use I don't mean to use that word "use" uh, in a negative way, but really that God has blessed our community to be a blessing uh, to the people who've been in need during the pandemic. We're grateful to God for his abounding grace uh, over our lives. So thank you, Lord, for uh, what you are doing in us and uh, through us, with us. We're grateful to the Lord. And uh, But that doesn't leave me much time uh, to uh, share uh, uh, the word in detail this morning, but I do hope to share a, a, a short, encouraging exhortation uh, so my aim is 10 minutes, and I am believing God for his grace to be able to do so. But I believe that you will be encouraged uh, by this exhortation uh, based on what Paul charged his spiritual son, Timothy. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for uh, this uh, morning. We thank you for the gift of our gathering. Uh, we especially thank you for the gift of your word. Uh, Lord, let the light of your word shine bright in our hearts. Let it strengthen our hearts, strengthen uh, our inner man. May it renew our minds. Um, may it bless us as a community together to strengthen our resolve to live for you, to live under your lordship and your kingship, uh, especially as we come to the close of this year. We're thankful for the uh, encouraging stories that we heard uh, about the marriage course uh, and even about how our church has been able to give uh, to individuals, to organizations, uh, Lord, to be a blessing, uh, Lord, even as you've called us to uh, and commanded us to good works for the glory of your name. But we come at this time into your hands, anoint our ears, uh, Lord, enable us to be good listeners, good hearers of your word, and to be encouraged uh, by uh, this exhortation that I'm going to share. Speak through me, Lord. We come at this time into your hands. Be glorified, Lord, you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. This first Sunday of the month of December is uh, basically called the beginning of the Advent, where uh, four of the Sundays of this month are taken to help uh, Christians all over the world to understand the real meaning of Christmas. So that's the first Sunday of this year, the coming, where we remember the coming of our Lord Jesus into this world. And uh, uh, even as we kind of take time to think and prepare to understand the real meaning of Christmas. Um, but the more important thing is not just the birth of Jesus that happened 2,000 years ago, but today, as we claim to be followers of Jesus, um, how do we evaluate his real lordship and kingship in our lives? In other words, is Jesus truly uh, the Lord of my life and your life? Is he truly king over our hearts and over everything that concerns us? Has his kingdom increased in our own lives, in our families this year that passed by? And as we come uh, to the closure of this year, it's, it's a year that has gone by, beloved. And here we are on December 5th, 2021. Um, and... Uh, there's probably a sense in you now to prepare for the new year. It's vital that we evaluate. It's vital that we, in that prayerful evaluation, we shake off unnecessary load and baggage. The Bible encourages us to do that because otherwise it will weigh us down, tire us. And uh, there are clearly things that God would not want us to carry uh, in or about our lives uh, or in our lives into this new year. He wants us to shake off, to be completely set free from unnecessary load or baggage. And he wants us to take the yoke of uh, Jesus. The Father wants us to take the yoke of Jesus, even as Jesus commanded us to do so, and gird ourselves to press on for the journey ahead of us. So, beloved, this, this day is important. This month is important and every day counts and i want to encourage you to make the most of it to be able to lighten yourselves in the lord to have peace with god to have the peace of god 
take the yoke of Jesus and let's strengthen further our resolve to live for the glory of God. And so Paul, in his letter to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, you know, uh, gives a very explicit, a clear encouragement. And uh, here is what he says. I'm reading it for you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And I believe this passage is, uh, as it was impressed on my heart, is important for each of us and for all of us together as a community. And so pay attention to what Paul tells Timothy. It's a loaded verse, full of encouragement. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And I would focus on the part where he says, fight the good fight of faith. So obviously we understand there are bad fights and we don't want to be part of those, but there is a good fight. It's the best fight and it's worth fighting for. And what do we fight for? And how do we fight? So yes, Paul answers that clearly in this verse. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. But I will put it in another manner to make it more clear. To lay hold of eternal life is to lay hold of Jesus. Paul would say in another place so beautifully, says, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is to gain him. And so we ought to fight in order to be faithful to Jesus. Because the entirety of the world system around us has been designed by the evil one in order to hurt, harm our relationship with the Lord, in order to disrupt or even destroy our faithfulness and our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, it calls us to fight to stay faithful to him. And so this is a good fight. It's worth every effort, every muscle, every resolve, every reminder. It's important to employ every resource that is available to us in the grace of God. His strength, his power, his wisdom, his community, all that the grace of God can provide, we employ it, we appropriate it, and we employ it in order to fight the good fight of faith to be simply faithful to Jesus. So that the same Apostle Paul would say, and we would be able to say along with him, I have fought the fight. I have kept the faith. And now I'm prepared to meet the Lord who will reward me for fighting this good fight of faith and finishing this journey well. Paraphrase. So my dear beloved, it's going to be the close of this year. For some, it could be even the close of other things in your life. It could be for some, even the close of your life here on earth. Whatever it could mean. Uh, closure comes sooner or later. And then there is the beginning of new things. And this transition of the close of one and the beginning of another is very crucial. And it calls for not many, but maybe one or two, a few important decisions. So my exhortation is to help you how to fight this good fight of faith. It's simple. It's foundational. But that does not or should not rob us of understanding the vital importance of being reminded of these things. You know, one of the documentaries that I used to uh, watch years before in Discovery would, was uh, Seconds Before Disaster. And it was basically a documentary that was based on man-made um, tragedies, you know, a ship sinking, a building collapsing, or whatever it could be, an oil rig exploding. And they would actually investigate as to what were the factors that came together to cause that disaster to happen. And disasters are terrible, loss of life, precious lives, loss of property, 
uh, you know, a lot of collateral damage in the environment. And so it's important to investigate what went wrong. And in every case, the foundations and the foundational structures were in question. So beloved, it is always important for us to revisit our foundations, to revisit the fundamentals because they are vital. You can, you can complete this race well. You can bear the load the Lord wants you to carry, the load of your roles, your responsibilities as, as a disciple of Jesus, as a husband, as a father, as a son, as a brother, as a member of the church. You know, God can help you if your foundations are strong. And so it's important that in order to fight the good fight of faith, we remind ourselves of the fundamentals. I want to bring three reminders today. Number one, how do you fight the good fight of faith? Number one, remind yourself that you are a child of God. This is vital, beloved. We fight from a place of sonship. We fight from a place where we know that our Father loves us and that he adopted us into his family. And the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 12 makes that absolutely clear. I remember reading that the first time about 28 years back and it burned my heart. To those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to be called children of God. Those who were born not of the will of man, but who were born not of the will of flesh and blood, but who were born of God. And so beloved, God wants you and I to live every day and every moment in the consciousness of our sonship. He never wants us to forget that even for a moment. First John chapter 3 was 1. Uh, uh, John would write, the same John would write, how great the Father's love for us. How great the Father's love for us. That we are now called children of God. Wow. Beloved, fight from that place of sonship. Fight from that place knowing that you are loved by God. And he demonstrated that love by giving his only son, Jesus Christ. In another place in the Gospels, the writer reminds us what Jesus said. As the Father has loved me, as the Father has loved me, comma, I have loved you, comma, Abide in my love. Beloved, there is, there is no other way to fight the good fight of faith. We can fight this fight by positioning ourselves in the love of the Father. So know this, that no matter how this year has been, evaluate this year from a place of sonship, not condemnation, because condemnation does not help. It kills, it dampens, it discourages, it demotivates us. But evaluate from the place of sonship. You are loved. You are loved in spite of what you did or you didn't do. And God wants to empower you, enable you in order to make the right choices, in order to, you know, get your direction back. And so remind yourself that you're a child of God. I've had to do that so many times this year. And uh, remind myself, you know, especially in my failures, especially when we sin and we fall short of what we know God commanded us. And we have to remind ourselves, God, you love me. It is the loving kindness of God that leads us and draws us to repentance. Number two, remind yourself that God is not going to give up on you. God is not going to give up on you. So let's read that in Philippians chapter one, verses three to verse six. Philippians chapter one, verses three to verse six. It's an encouraging passage. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. Wow, look at Paul's prayer life. Verse five, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse six, for I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. So important for us to remind ourselves that God will perfect, will complete the good work that he has begun in me, in me, in you. That God will not give up on you. 
And so therefore, because he's not going to give up on me and you, we must not give up on ourselves. God wants to do good, beloved. It's at times very difficult to understand what's the good in a given situation. But he promises to work out all things uh, for your good, for my good, and above all, for his glory. So, beloved, don't give up. I want to encourage you, don't give up. There is, there is still hope. God's grace abounds over you. God's mercy surrounds you. Choose the Lord. Choose to come back to him, beloved. If you've gone away, you've gone astray, you've drifted away, say, Lord, where you are, call upon the Lord. Ask him, Lord, help me to come back. And you will sense and experience the tangible drawing back of God in your life. And just respond to him as a son, as a daughter. Come back to him. End this year well. Begin the new year in a place of strength in intimacy with God. Amen. God is not going to give up on you. Number three, <clears throat> very important. Come back to your first love. And there is an important cue in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 3 to verse 5. You know, the very known and important passage where Jesus is lovingly rebuking a church for going or <clears throat> falling from the place of their first love for him. So he first appreciates the church for their deeds, their toil, their perseverance. And then he says this in verse 4 of Revelation 2. Let's read from verse 3 as an encouragement. And, and I believe this word is like a prophetic word for some of you this morning. Um, and this is what Jesus appreciates you. He says, and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. This is a word for some of you this morning. You have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. Verse four, but, but I have this against you that you have left your first love. Now, here's what Jesus is wanting to do. He wants to help us. So, Shannon, how do I come back? Lord, how do I come back to my first love? Yes, Lord, I've not given up. I've endured a lot this year. I've endured a loss in the last few years. Uh, Lord, I'm tired, uh, but I'm not going to give up. But, Lord, I'm not where I used to be, you know, that, that passion for you, that fire that I used to have for you. I'm not where I, I used to be, Lord. How do I come back to that place? of innocent, childlike, fervent love for you, Jesus. Here's what he says in verse 5. Therefore, remember. Remember those times. Remember from where you have fallen. You know, a few weeks back, I shared about how I take time to recollect and rehearse the goodness of God over the years. That's important. you know why? Because rehearsing the goodness the great goodness, the great faithfulness of God and how he captivated our hearts in the early days. You know, we remember, it rekindles that love and we want to go back to those places. We want to kind of even maybe physically revisit those places and, and do those things that we did because many times the first works rekindle the first love. It works backwards. So therefore, remember from where you've fallen and repent and do the deeds. You did at first. And do the deeds. So look at what he says. Three things. Remember from where you have fallen. So remember, acknowledge it. Lord, I, I'm not where I used to be. But remember what you used to do. And repent. Repent means turn back. That's all it means. Not regret. Not resent. Repent. Reconnect back. Turn back to Jesus. In your heart, in your mind, turn back to Jesus. Acknowledge your fallenness. But turn back to Jesus. Acknowledge your fallenness as, your, as a son and daughter. Dad, Papa, Abba, Father, I'm coming back to you. And do, number three, do the deeds you did at first. So sometimes, and I think most of the times, not even sometimes, first works help in rekindling the first love. Do the deeds you did before. 
And so this is what I want to encourage you. Come back to your first love. Redoing your first works. Go back to those places. Go back to those spots. Go back to doing those things that you did before. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will use that to once again rekindle that flame, that fire of the first love you had for him. So that's my exhortation for you this morning, beloved. How to fight the good fight of faith, my brother, my sister, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take as much as time as possible this month to remind myself that our father loves me. He loved me. He knew me. And he thought about me even before he laid the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1. Jesus had Shannon. Jesus had my father. Jesus had Anaya in his heart, in his mind, even before he laid the foundation of the world. I'm going to remind myself how precious me and my family is to the Lord. And number two, yes, I will acknowledge where I've fallen, but I'm going to remind myself to not give up because God's not going to give up on Shannon. He's never going to give up on Shannon. So I have no right to give up on, my, uh, give up on myself because I don't belong to myself. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I'm the possession. I'm a child of God. I belong to our Father. And so I'm going to do the third thing. This month is crucial. So I've already made a couple of decisions as to what I'm going to do. Redo the first works, believing that the Lord will help me to rekindle my first love for him, that he will put the fuel and he will increase and intensify the fire in my heart. And may that be true for you this month, beloved. In this month of Advent, in this month of Christmas, don't just celebrate the birth of Jesus. Prepare for the coming of Jesus. Prepare, because now he's not coming as a lowly babe. He's coming as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's what everything in this world is being orchestrated and being organized by God. The good, the bad, the ugly is being prepared and brought together for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not coming as a lowly babe in Bethlehem in a manger. The sky is going to split open. Every eye shall see him. The clouds are going to burst forth in praise. Every tree in the field, every flower in the field, every animal, every beast, every bird is going to gaze and see his beauty. And every eye shall see him, beloved. Get prepared. The coming of the Lord is near. The rapture is nearer. Behold, he is even at the door. Don't waste your life. Don't waste any time. You're a child of God. Don't give up. And redo your first works. And come back to your first love. The Lord bless you. Amen.